hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making an old time sled. Well, not too long ago on an episode of What the Heck Is That in Kenny's Shop, I brought you this. And this is one of my first woodworking projects that I made well, well over 40 years ago. Guys, I had several requests asking that, you know, I'd like to make one of these. Can we do this on the show? And I thought, what a great show idea. Absolutely. So, you know what? Let's head over to the bench and I'll show you what we've got in store for today. Well, as with a lot of my projects lately, I have gone on the computer and I have made a pattern. And this pattern is free for the taking, free for the download on my website. I also have a full-scale assembly diagram. Now, guys, I thought what would be fun with this, to make this a little more interesting this week, is I want to forego all power tools. And kind of as a tribute to this old time sled and the, and the days of old, we are going to do this entire project using hand tools and nothing but. So it's all going to start off with a rough cut piece of poplar. Well, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use our hand plane and take down the rough surface to give us a nice flat surface on one side of our board. Our next job is to resaw this to our thickness that we need. And in this case, we need to cut it a little wider than 3 8 of an inch. So I'll just take my tape measure here and I'll mark just a little wider than 3 8 maybe a 16th wider, just like that. And I will use my finger as a fence. And we'll just place that mark right along our board. And we'll do the same thing for the top edge. And now very carefully, we will resaw this all the way down to about half or a little more than halfway through, we will turn it over and saw the other way to join our lines together. Okay, and we're gonna need a couple of those. So, cut a few of them, and then we're going to have to plane them to their final thickness. Well, once you get your boards planed down, and they don't have to be perfect, we're going to need two pieces that will be nine inches in length. So we'll just mark that there, square it off, and we will cut these pieces here using our miter box. And we will cut two pieces like that. And now these two pieces need to be one and nine sixteenths of an inch wide. So what we're going to do is in the same fashion that we did the resaw, we're going to mark it, we're gonna cut down one side, flip it over, cut down to meet those lines, and then plane flush up to the line. So make sure you give yourself a little bit of working room cutting just outside of your mark at one and nine sixteenths. Well, I ended up messing up one of my pieces by measuring incorrectly. And I don't know if you can see that, but this end ended up to be one and nine sixteenths. And you can see just my pencil line there way off. I don't even know what this side is, but it's a lot less than one and nine sixteenths. Stuff happens, no big deal. I'll put that aside. We could probably use that for another part of the sled, but I had to make another piece. So we're gonna do a little bit of layout now, and it's a pretty simple layout. From the front of our sled, you want to measure in two inches, and then you want to measure in another three inches. And then from the bottom here, or from the top corner, we'll measure down one quarter of an inch, and then we're going to measure in three inches. Just like that. The next line that we want to place will be at 9 16 inch down from the top. So there's 9 16 9 16 And we'll just place a mark across there to give us 
uh, our bottom layout line. You'll understand in just a few seconds here. Now, you can use the pattern that um, is on the website and just cut it as per the pattern. You can make templates, you can adhere it right to your wood and cut it. But I'm just going to freehand mark this here. And what this 9 16 is, it is the bottom of our divot on our sled. So I'm just roughly going to mark the center of that right there. And we're just going to sketch it up. Just like that. Same thing here. Just sketch this curve. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, and this here as well, we're going to slope this down in the front of our sled and it will end right there at our three inch mark. And that is essentially the shape of our sled. So I'm gonna refine this a little bit and then I'm going to cut this out using our fret saw. Okay, so now depending on your skill level, you can do one of two things here. You can cut right along the line and just leave it at that and file a little bit if you have to. Or you can cut it just outside the line and use a file to bring it up to the line or even a block plane if that's your thing. But for me, I'm just going to cut right along the line here and hope for the best. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and there is the one front curve cut. I did go a little outside the line there, but I can fix that up with a file afterwards. All right, and now you just want to cut this one divot here, and it's the same process. And there we go. There is one of our sled sides done. Now you can sand this as you wish and as I said file there to clean up along the edges. You can use a file in here to clean up this edge but cut your other piece just the same so that you have your two sides of your sled and I'll see you when you get those done. Okay, so at this point you can give these two pieces a hand sanding and put them aside. Uh, we can move on to a couple of the other parts now. Well, it's now time to make our sled top platforms and I have re-sawn and planed down some stock to be roughly, roughly, <laughs> 5 sixteenths of an inch thick. And I'm just going to cut it just outside the line at an inch and a half wide. And then I'll just plane up to the line to get it to the inch and a half dimension. And then we'll cut two pieces at two and a half inches long. And you can give those a sanding and put them aside. Now there's a couple of pieces here that are all made in the same fashion and one is the arm support block and the sled center brace. So I don't think we need another video of those pieces. They're all done in the exact same fashion, resaw, plane, cut down to their final dimensions. Um, but at this point we can turn our attention to the sled arms and you will need to resaw, cut and plane two pieces that are seven and a half inches long by three eighths by three eighths. So the object here on these arms is that from about an inch from one end, we are going to shape it round or round-ish. So we can just do this with a spoke shave. If you don't have a spoke shave, you can just file it, you can sand it, it's poplar, it sands and files very, very well. So we'll just get this one side done here. And then once you're done that side, you can take your piece out, flip it over, 
clamp it down and we will do the other side. So continue to shape your arms until they are rounded the way that you like. Well, at this point, we can do a little bit of the assembly and let it dry up while we're working on some of the pieces. Um, and what we want to do is we can glue this sled center brace into our sled. So I'm going to measure in on each piece one and a half inches and we'll just place a little line here. And we'll do the same thing on the inside of this piece. One and a half inches from the back. And what that is, is that is the edge of our brace piece. And it will also be 13 sixteenths of an inch up from the bottom. Now you can get all of those um, measurements by measuring directly off the full size uh, layout assembly diagram. So all we're going to do, for me, I have some set up blocks. You can just cut a piece of stock if you want to be that thickness. So we can apply a little bit of glue on the one and a half inch side, place it with the back end lined up with those uh, marks at one and a half inches, and we will glue it in place. We'll lightly clamp that up and let it dry. And while we're waiting for that to dry, we can actually glue on our rear um, top platform onto our sled sides. And they will just get mounted 3 eighths of an inch in from the back edge of our sled. And again, we can clamp that in place and let it dry. Well, I now have the arm support block here. And the very first thing that I'm going to do with this is I'm going to mark the center. Right there. And then I will roughly mark the center on the half inch side. Doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. And once I get that center marked, I will drill a 3 32nd diameter hole right through the middle. And seeing I said no power tools, I'll do that with this little egg beater drill. And now on your second top platform, place this piece roughly centered. It doesn't have to be perfect. And using a small little nail, nail it in place. Now that hole that we drilled is actually bigger than the diameter of the nail and that's to allow that piece to pivot. I would also suggest placing a number eight washer between your two pieces and that'll help as well to help it to pivot. There we go and with our nail through I will cut this off peen it and file it flat. And now our arms, we can drill that same hole in our arms. We want our uh, arms to overhang about a quarter of an inch beyond that support piece. And we can drill that 3 32nd diameter hole into this piece here and as well. We will attach that with nails and peen them over. Now, truth be told, I should have done that piece first before doing the bottom one. So I'm gonna have to take this apart. So make sure you put the arms on this cross brace first and then you can attach it to the bottom piece. Well, I'm going to change it up a bit. I, I don't really like this nailing thing and this peening. I was trying to remain true to the original one that was done because that's the way it's assembled. Uh, and that's the way it was done at that time when I did that project. So I'm going to drill some proper sized holes and I'm going to use these little brass screws in order to hold the arms onto the arm support and then the arm support onto the top platform.
All right, and there we go. Those, that is that assembly done. And at this point now, we can glue this onto our side assembly. And for that, you can just scale right off of the assembly drawing. Just put a little bead of glue here on each side of our top platform. We'll line it up, sit it in place, and we'll clamp that and let that dry. Well, the last piece that we need to make is the seat back. And I have a piece of scrap and I've cut off three quarters of an inch of it. And we're just gonna put a center line here. And the bottom of our seat is five eighths of an inch. So we will mark out five sixteenths from either side. And the top of our seat is three eighths. So from either side of our center line here as well, we will mark three sixteenths. And we will join those lines together. And that is the side profile of our seat back. So we can now take a square and run a square line down from each one of those bevel lines. And this is going to help us guide our saw because we're actually going to cut these profiles with a rip blade carcass saw. And once you get that marked, you can just use your hand saw and cut down through those lines. And then using our miter box, we'll cut it to length. And if you need to, you can clean it up with a block plane, but I think a little bit of sanding will get this done just perfectly. And once you get that done, you can glue it in place on your sled. So when these arms are on here properly, they should be loose and should be able to tilt up like this. So what you wanna do is just lift them up and you will line up your seat back so that these arms will sit when everything is squared up to the body, they will sit right there like that on your seat back. And once you get that lined up the way that you like it, then you can just glue it in place. And that my friends is our old time sled completed. And there you have it, an old time sled. Guys, this project, as I said, was by viewer request, and it is a replica of one of the very first projects that I ever made way back when, well over 40 years ago. And I have to say, you know what? There's one word for today's project, and that word is exhausting. Um, I kind of wanted to keep it as original as I could and hence I tried to use nails like I did in the original and it really didn't work I didn't like it it wasn't happening um, I don't know what the difference is between back then when I did it and now when I when I've done it but something is definitely different but it just wasn't working the way I wanted it to so I swapped it up to use the screws and as long as those arms are loose fitting and they can raise and lower kind of thing that's all you got to worry about um, so the holes, of course, that I have marked on the pattern, they may change for you depending on what screws you use. Now, the hand tool thing, as I said, I was trying to sort of keep it, keep it in the same feeling as what I made the original. And the original was made at a place called Pioneer Village. And that Pioneer feel was no power tools. They didn't have power tools. So for this project, I used absolutely nothing as far as power tools go. Resaw was done by hand. The planing was done by hand. All the cutting, the curves, the sanding was done by hand. Even the drilling was done by hand. Um, I think the closest thing I came to technology was using my setup blocks to raise the um, brace piece up to its proper height to get it glued in place and possibly my clamps are a little uh, 
more modern than what they had back then. But other than that, it was all done by hand tools and I had an absolute blast with it. Now, if you want to do it with hand tools, you know what? I applaud you. I had a lot of fun. I'm, I'm tired. Um, this, this took a lot longer than I thought. My arms are sore from the planing, the sawing. Uh, it's been a long day making this project, but a fun day. And if you want to use hand tools to make yours, I say do it. But with that being said, um, this project would be very quick to whip off using power tools. Um, resawing on your bandsaw and then your thickness planer to get the proper thicknesses. Being able to cut your blanks on the table saw like that instead of you know, jigga, 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 like that is a lot faster. Um, the scroll saw, this project screams scroll saw and uh, I don't know what else to tell you there other than give it a try. But if you don't have a scroll saw, you can always use your bandsaw. Guys, this is a great project to get your young ones involved in the love of woodworking. And you can even have all of the blanks already pre-cut, um, being the top shelves, the seat, all of that, and have them assemble the project because at the younger ages, assembly to them is making it as just as if they would have done all the work themselves. So keep that in mind that just because mom or dad make the pieces and have them assemble it as a kit. They're still woodworking, they're still loving it, and you're still exposing them to the craft. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I want to thank you for the suggestion. I had a load of fun with this, and although truth be told, it was so many years ago that I don't remember making it. I don't remember what my experience was like when I made this thing many years ago, but it must have meant something to me um, seeing the fact that this thing still is around and still lives in my shop. So who knows, make one with your young ones and maybe it will become their heirloom first woodworking piece that they can have in their shop when they hit their 50s like me. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, we have a lot of fun here, and I hope you're going to consider becoming a part of that. I hope you've enjoyed today's project, guys. If you want the pattern for this, you need to do nothing more other than visit my website, acutabovewoodworkings.com. You click on the free pattern section, and it's right there. The pattern, the photo of the finished product, along with today's tutorial video. So check it out, get yourself the pattern and make one of these. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're going to make one for yourself. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video. Keep those suggestions coming, guys.